Yo, what up everybody? Moto Fox back here again. Today we're talking Tacomas and speakers. Um, as, if you've seen in any of my previous videos, I did a uh, receiver upgrade and also put a an amp on it for um, the mids. And my factory mids are definitely struggling. So um, did a little bit of research and I, I wanna show you um, something really cool that I found out. I'm not gonna call it a hack or a whatever, cause it's not. But um, all right, so starting out here from the factory, um, you have a six by nine down here and you have a tweeter. Um, on the other side, I have the door all apart. So I'll show you a little bit more on that. Then we swing around to the back here and you're like, oh, there should be a speaker here. Uh, no, there's nothing, at least on the access cab. And then if you look in on the cab here where I have marked with the black tape right there, uh, that is a little tweeter that goes there and that is your rear speakers basically. And it's pathetic. Um, but at the same time here in a second, when I show you the factory six by nines, those are pathetic too. So um, let me go over to the disassembled side and we'll talk a little bit more about what you can do. All right, we're on the other side now and we got the door panel off. And you can see this is where the six by nine would go. I pulled that out real quick. I left the uh, tweeter up here just kind of for reference, but the way that the wires come in is it's going to go for the power comes into here and then you know does its thing or whatever and then reroutes out and then goes down to the six by nine so um to get better sound what i'm going to do is do component um basically the same thing it has here um where i'm going to put a dedicated six by nine down here and then there will be a tweeter up here but since i'm doing that i'll have to put in a crossover i'll show a little bit on that because i think it's kind of uh neat and it's definitely important in you know, say this application where you're putting in components. Now, let's get to the point of why you're probably watching the video. As I have this rear open, you can see, oh, hey, there's a convenient little panel there. Uh, so, you just take these little guys out and boom, you have a speaker hole there. Um, remember to pull out the... Uh, the Springfield, if you have one in there, uh, probably do. But uh, once you pull that out, you have plenty of room in there. Now, keep in mind that we don't have wires going in there. Um, so I'll have to run some wires from the back of the receiver. Um, and, you know, I'll probably have to pull all this stuff apart here to get the wires um, back there and fished into the door. But at the same time... Um, a little bit of work and we're gonna basically double our sound uh so let me go back to the tailgate i'll kind of show you what i got and why and uh then we can start the install all right and we're on the uh, tailgate let's talk a little bit about these factory speakers from the way i understand it and definitely comment below if i'm incorrect on this i'm definitely not the foremost expert um, but the front speakers are always six by nines with a tweeter. Um, you can see how pathetic this little guy is. I'll show you the back here in a minute, but, uh, for the, the rear or lack of rear, um, from 2005 until 2008, they did offer rear speakers in the access cab. But as far as I understand from... 2005 until 2013 um they have those uh speakers um in the back door at least the adapter is the same um from the kit like i got all my uh upgrades from uh crutchfield and you know they include kits for free which i haven't shopped from from them in a long time and they've gotten a lot better i mean they've had to adapt you know but with the times but uh man they did a good job but all right so real quick let's talk about uh this factory speaker like man this thing is cheap ass paper the this surround just feels cheesy and then what Ugh. Ugh. oh man what 
what is that? What is that? And then, all right, so then the tweeter here. Dude, that's that's massive compared to that guy. That poor little, that poor little six by nine. But so that's what uh, basically you're working with. And the tweeter that is in the headrest, they, you know, they, the headrest, they took some of the foam and cut it out so the tweeter would fit up inside of that foam area. So it, it's even smaller than this. It, this is giant in comparison to that in comparison to that little guy. So your factory sound, this is what you're working with really. So um, there's a million different ways to upgrade. I decided to go with Infinity myself. A um, couple different reasons why I decided to go with Infinity. Um, one, the reference speakers go off of a basically like a they call it a true four ohm which the speakers are at three ohm so they're going to run a little bit more efficient because the loss in the wiring um basically up to the head unit should make up for that uh, four ohm so the the speaker should run more efficient uh, and then the the amplifier that i'm running off of the back of my head unit from a toto is uh what uh 47 by four um and i think the let's see the uh six and a half are uh there i went with two ways in the rear uh because you know i could i don't have you know a, a separate area and didn't feel like replacing that tweeter inside of the uh head or uh, inside of the uh yeah the head breast area uh or the yeah, whatever. Um, but the rears are 55 watt RMS, so they're just on just a little bit underpowered, which is awesome. The front speakers, the six by nines that I went with for the front, um, they are uh, 125 RMS. So I left myself a little bit of room for improvement on that. Sorry about the sawing in the background there, but. All right, so for the rears, I went with six and a half, like I said, and they're uh, two-way, so you get the tweeter in the center, um, so basically the full range in that, that area. And then I went with, the, you can see the, you know, the type that I went with, and then that's the bracket in the rear and the uh, part number that uh, if you're gonna do this, that would work on. And this one says, wait a minute, Toyota multi-application 98 and up. So maybe it's, uh, there's a lot more years that use that than what I'm thinking. And then these are the six by nines that I went with and uh, same went with uh, Infinity Reference. Um, look at the size of those magnets in comparison. That's gonna sound so much better. And then uh, those are, you know, some of the adapters. It has a ton of adapters for uh, the tweeters, like the kit itself came with uh, a bunch of different adapters. Uh, so I'm not sure which ones all I'm gonna use yet. Um, and then you can see toward the top left there, those are actually some uh, clips that I printed on my 3D printer for the rear, since it didn't you know, have factory uh, screw holes there. So I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna mount all that yet, hopefully just whatever I got in this kit will work. And then you can see the crossovers there. Um, so hopefully it'll sound a lot better once I'm done. I, I mean, it, there's basically no way that it couldn't sound better. So I'm gonna get cracking on this to get this done, but maybe I'll show some, I'll, yeah, I'll probably show some more. See you guys in a little bit. All right, so we're up at the front door now, and the first order of business is to figure out the wiring on it. So on the wiring harness here that comes into the uh, tweeter, uh, the tweeter disperses the power. So now what we need to do is figure out which one is, you know, the power in and which one is going down to the six by nine. So what I've done is this uh, wire that was hanging down uh, previously, it you know connected on the outside of the speaker. Um, on these, the connection's on the inside of the speaker, so I just tucked it back here, 
plugged in the wiring harness adapter that came from Crutchfield and I've just connected a wire on there. So um, I have my multimeter set to tone. So once I get continuity, I should get a beep. Not that one, not that one. And it's that one. So let's test the last one. Just be sure we don't get nothing. So what we're looking at is green goes down to the six by nine. I'm definitely gonna test the other wire down there, but since they're in colored pairs, um, this blue one most likely goes to the negative on the uh, six by nine. So we cut this harness off here. Normally I'd say cut it a little bit long. That way, if you wanna put in the factory stuff again, you can. Um, in this case, I don't know who would want to put in the factory tweeter and 6x9, so I'm going to cut this short so I have longer wires here to work with. Um, so let me get that, and then I'll wire up the uh, crossover, and then I'll show you how this wires into the crossover. Alright, so we got that step done now. Got the speaker uh inside of the uh housing and then the housing mounted to the frame then the wires uh go to that the smaller one is the negative and the larger one's the positive and then those go up here to the crossover and you got uh this side is the subwoofer in and the green is the positive um blue is negative so that powers the six by nine and then this is your power in so blue green power in and then the center ones are going to be for the tweeter so uh, my next step is to um, figure out all those brackets and mount the tweeter in here and then this will probably get end up getting mounted somewhere in here um, depending upon where space and such it for the door is but uh, let me go ahead and get that uh, speaker mounted up and maybe i can give you a little hint on which brackets and stuff I used. Cool, got the tweeter mounted in there now. So what I ended up using was, uh, when you order from Crutchfield, it came with uh, an adapter plate here, that this guy. So all I did was drill out the center of that. Um, then ended up using, let's see, so it's, this thing uh, like drops in there and then this allows you to kind of pivot it. So with it being able to spin and also pivot, I can adjust which way the tweeter is gonna be facing. Um, just give it a little bit more customization. And then the only thing left here on this side to do is to wire that. Remember your big plug is your positive, little one's your negative. And then it'll probably mount somewhere in here. I think it'll have space in the door. Um, but uh, yeah, so on to that next step. All right, so we got that part done now too. So uh, got our crossover wired up. Got our uh, tweeter connected in the center here. Positive on positive, negative on negative. Um, have it where it can be adjusted up down left or right so if i need to i can pull off the panel and adjust that um got the six by nine in i opted not to put the screen on um just because you know they look cool but nobody's ever going to see it and it's not going to add any additional protection being already behind the door so um then with the crossover i just have it zip tied for right now i might come back and um attach it better later but for right now it'll be good and it'll be behind the the door if i have any rattles or anything then i'll address it um and then as for the little button that's on here this is a little kind of like a uh, tweeter boost button so you know if you're not getting enough uh tweeter or something or getting too much tweeter then you can push the little button to um i think uh in is less and out is more um but I think that's all for this front door here. And then you just wash, rinse, and repeat on the other side. And then I'm starting to get kind of low on daylight today. So I'm going to wait until another day to 
do the rear speakers that way i can show you guys better but uh i think that'll be it for now have a good one guys all right so i pretty much got all the front wrapped up i got a couple little things left to do but uh it's cold windy and rainy outside so i decided to do a little bit inside today so what we're looking at here is you have the back panel um and i need some way of course to get sound through because it's not going to go through the plastic very well but I don't want to try and track down a, what, a 2008 back panel or something like that. So, um, what I'm going to do here, and try and keep this simple, I 3D printed a little grid here that has holes in it. So, I'll line it up where I want it, um, probably tape it in place or glue it in place, and then just go through and drill out each one of these holes and then um, once I get through that, then I'll see if, you know, these holes are sufficient in that size. They're, I think they're about two millimeters. Uh, well, I guess I know they're two millimeters because I designed it. But uh, so once I get that onto there, then I can see, you know, what it looks like and if I should go uh, with bigger holes or what. Um, but at least that gets me a template to have my holes all nice and straight. Um, I'll go ahead and put this up on Thingiverse, and I have one other object that I'll put up on Thingiverse that's related to this. But uh, we'll see how this turns out. All right, and I finished my first pass here. You can kind of see it. I think I'm going to end up making the holes a little bit bigger, but I wanted to start small because you can always take out more material, but you can't add material back. So... We'll see how big I go. And that's what it did look like. And that's what it looks like now. I don't think I'm gonna go any bigger on the holes. I'll uh, do some testing with them actually on the car before I would do anything like that. But I think that looks pretty good. Um, gonna go ahead and do the other one. I sure am glad that part is done. It's definitely not the hardest part. It's, it wasn't hard at all, really. I mean, having the 3D printer really helped so I could have nice straight rows. Um, but at the same time, you know, I had to design it and then drill it. And I think it was 173 holes a side. Uh, so that is a lot. It was a lot of little, little work. Um, and then also just kind of stressful of you know, how's it gonna look? Is it gonna look okay? Is it gonna look factory? Uh, Cause I didn't want to have like the screens poking through here. That I thought that would look cheesy as hell. Um, and I think it all went pretty well, except for this one little guy that I'm probably gonna be the only one to notice. Well, you guys now too. God damn it. And we're on to the rear speakers here so i've started a little bit um spent kind of a little bit of time figuring out wiring and stuff i pulled back a little bit of the headliner here and um just didn't have easy access to to the speaker up here um plus there's a an airbag in the way so what i've decided to do is you can see i've already fished the wire through here do this little uh, rubber grommet thing and then it comes out in here and then just gonna run it along the floorboard there and then I'll run it up over to the radio from there and it should be the same on both sides uh, where I can run the wire in the same place I'll go over and pull some panels before I do it but um, it should be pretty easy here I'm gonna pull off that panel and um, then I'll show you actually mounting the speaker and one of the brackets that I had to 3D print. I couldn't really find um, the part online that I wanted. So these are the clips that I've mentioned a couple times. Um, the front door has these and basically it's just, it's like a square end. And it has this little flare there and then you can screw, screw into it. So uh, since they're not quite factory, they're a little bit loose in there. 
So yeah, there's just a little bit of wiggle. So what I'm gonna probably end up doing is put a little bit of, uh, uh, super, not super glue, but uh, hot glue on the back just to make those stable. And then I'll just put some of that uh, rubber stuff around here and hopefully it'll press up against this when this pulls out to make everything tight and not have a, a gap here that'll rattle. Um, I'll put the link for those up on Thingiverse. Um, one more thing that I'm thinking of while I'm here, I put this door panel on and found that uh, it was a little off center. So uh, note to self, what I should have done is move this down off center a bit and then it would have fit. But what I'll have to do now is there's a little grill that goes on the top of here. I didn't know that actually popped out real easy, but I just have to take the uh, Dremel and cut a little bit of that off and then it'll fit on there. And these little clips, little push tight clips, there was four of them that I had to take off. All four of them broke. So yeah, love those clips. Look at me remembering to check fitment this time. I uh, put it up there. I think on the back here, I'm going to put uh, the speaker grills on just to make sure that uh, nothing hits. But uh, I put the panels up there and everything looked really good. Um, the placement of the speaker holes a little bit off, but it, I think it's close enough where it looks good on the panel and it covers at least three quarter of the speaker. So I'm going to uh, let me get you a real quick shot with the, the grill on. And that fast, I hate them. The way that the holes line up on the body and the way that the speaker mounts into the holes there, there's no way I'm ever going to get it all straight. So that's as close, as straight as it's going to get. So that's what I'm going to gonna have on there. If I put the grill on there, it makes it look really crooked. So, nope. All right, well, I got both sides installed now. Uh, this is what it looks like. I think they look pretty slick in there. I mean, you won't, of course, see anything. Oh, get rid of that. And sorry for the wind noise, it is windy as fuck. But I have that installed. Um, this one runs up down by the floorboard. As you can see, everything's pulled out there right now. Uh, let me take you over to the other side real quick. And this is what the finished panel looks like. Um, I still, you know, have uh, wiring to do, like I said, on the other side, just to connect to the back of the head unit. But I think that looks pretty good. I mean, uh, for uh, just basically just buying some uh, six and a halfs and it came with pretty much everything else I needed. Um, and then 3D printing those little clips were clutch. Like, um, it ended up holding the speaker really well in there. So I'm not going to end up doing like a, uh, sound test or anything like that today. Um, I'll finish up wiring up the radio. I actually broke apart on the faceplate adapter earlier. So, uh, more parts, but, uh, I'll finish this up and, uh, I'll catch you guys on the next video.